Hi everyone and welcome to Google Forms 101. In this video we're going to start by going over what Google Forms actually are and then uh, the instructional uses, how you can use it in the classroom. At that point we'll dive in and actually create a form from scratch and I'll show you how to get that started from your drive uh, and as well as the different features of a Google Form. So we'll go over the different options available in the toolbar, the different uh, question types that you can add into your form, uh, as well as some of the form settings that you can change depending on how you want the form to function and, and what your target group is for uh, getting information. And then once you have it created, how do you share that form out so that people can access the live form and actually complete it? And then finally, I'll show you a couple different ways that you can view the responses, whether right within the Google Form uh, layout or if you'd like to shoot it off to a spreadsheet and do some more uh, work with your data. So what are Google Forms? Well, basically, they're a tool that helps you collect, organize, and analyze any type of information you can think of. Uh, what's nice about Google Forms, too, is some of their features. And the one that I like is that uh, you have many different question options. It's not just text-based or multiple-choice questions. There's a lot of different ways that you can collect information. Uh, there's a responsive design, so it can work equally well on a computer or a tablet or a phone. Uh, you can use the data from the form that you collect to create different visualizations automatically within uh, the form. And you can also export it to a sheet, as I mentioned a, a couple seconds ago, to do some more advanced uh, functionality with the sheet, depending on what you'd like to do with the data. And then lastly, it's collaborative, so we won't go into it too much in this video, but you can collaborate on a form with colleagues just as you would with a Google Doc or a Slide or any other uh, app in the Google App Suite. So for educational uses, a lot of times people start using forms as a way to streamline the workflow of something like a warm-up or an exit ticket. A really simple way for students to provide in, uh, input, uh, to give some feedback uh, to teachers regarding what they understood and what they didn't. Uh, so that's that's usually where teachers start with this, and it's a great way to uh, to start using forms. You can also use forms as a way to provide more formal assessments or quizzes. And what's nice is that Google actually built in some quizzing features right into forms that has a grading feature and a way that it will automatically send students feedback on the quiz as you set up a, a form of an answer key. Uh, you can also use it for observation data for you or perhaps students using it to collect information uh, during a lesson or a science experiment or something like that. Or also if you're doing learning walks, it's a way that you can collect information based on observations in the classroom. Another use of it is to monitor student progress. So you can use it to help monitor academic and behavioral progress. Uh, and students can even use it themselves to self-monitor their progress along different areas. And then parent communications this is a way if you want to collect information from parents quickly, you can shoot a quick form to them, have them fill it out, and then it ends up right into your Google Drive. Okay, so let's dive right in and start creating a form. Okay, the first step is to open your Google Drive and click on the new button. Now, it won't be one of the first features that pop up, so you actually have to go down to the more section, and it's typically the first one that shows up there. And then click on Google Forms. So once you, your form opens up, the first thing you should do is give it a title. And at that point, it should actually automatically put that title up on the top. So now where I typed in sample form, it titled it sample form up at the top left. Now this toolbar to the right is where you're going to add different elements to your form. So the first button is to add a question. Uh, the second is to add a title or description. Uh, the third is if you want to insert an image into your form. The fourth one is to add a video from YouTube. And the last one is to add different sections. And this is uh, particularly helpful if you have longer forms that may have multiple pages to them, this would add that feature. So let's start by taking a look at the different question types. So when you click the plus button, uh, it will add a new question and by default it will go to multiple choice. But if you click on this little uh, triangle here, you'll see there are a few different uh, options that you can choose from. The first two are text-based uh, or written responses, so whether it's a short answer or a paragraph, this is where you'd want uh, the respondent to just type in an answer. Uh, multiple choice, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Drop-down is also a type of multiple choice, but um, just a little bit different formatting. Checkboxes, that's where you would have uh, students choose more than one option, if applicable, uh, choose all that apply. The linear scale, you can customize that, for instance, a scale of 1 to 5, 1 to 10, whatever you'd like to set that up as. Uh, multiple choice, this is good for if you wanted to set up something like a rubric or a matching question, or even a series of true-false questions in a table so that you don't have to add 
several different individual questions. You could put them all into a multiple choice grid. Then the last two are helpful if you wanted to have them input date or time because it's formatted for them, a calendar will pop up. Just a lot simpler than having them manually type in any particular date or time. Okay, one workflow tip is to have some identifiable information right at the beginning of a form. So typically uh, when I use this in the classroom, I would have last name, first name, and email address. Uh, I would also sometimes put the period or the, um, the time uh, of the, the class. But that's really up to you. You can customize it however you'd like. But think about how you'd want to sort the data afterward, particularly if you're pushing this off to a spreadsheet, because those first few questions will really help use that information. Okay, so to access your form settings, you're going to click on the gear to the upper right hand corner. And the first option, which is really helpful, is to collect email addresses from the people that submit it, particularly if it's within your domain. Uh, makes it so that you don't even have to ask that question about the email, you'll have it automatically. And then if you do want them to have a response receipt, so if you want them to see exactly what they submitted to the form, you can click that and it will send it uh, to their email address. For the limit to one response, you can choose that as well, but they would have to be signed in with their Google account to do that. And then the last two are edit after submit or see summary chart of uh, the responses and you can enable each of those if you'd like. So once you've finished creating your form, now you have to share it with the people you'd like to respond to the form. So uh, there are two different ways to do that. And the easiest way, I think, is to just click on the preview eyeball at the top there. And what will happen is you'll have a live view of the form so you can check to see what it would look like to the respondents. But then you can just take this URL and paste it, post it, share it uh, with whoever you'd like to complete your form. So that's one way you can do it. Uh, the other way you can send the form out is to click the send button to the top right and by default it comes up with the email option so if you want to send this to a series of individuals or to a group you can do that and then the form will be embedded into the body of uh, the email that they get you can also access the link here as well by clicking on this link button uh, you can use the shortened url and then just like the last method uh, you copy and paste that and, and share it wherever you'd like so to access the responses to your form, you can just click on the responses tab here. And what's nice about this view is that once they start to come in, you'll see visualizations, you'll see pie charts, just ways that it will make it uh, easier to view and, and make use of the data. And you can also separate it by summary view or by individual response. So you'll have that option as well. The other thing that you can do with this is you can send this to a spreadsheet. So to do that, you click on the create spreadsheet button you can either create a new form or you can select an existing spreadsheet that you would want to push this into. But either way, what it will do is take all of this information, push it into a Google Sheet, and then you can run scripts from there. You can format it however you'd like. Uh, it's just another option if you want to do even more with your data after you collect it. And that wraps up Google Forms 101. Uh, we'll explore some of the more advanced features and different options in Google Forms in a future video. Uh, but for now, you have all that you need to get started using Google Forms in the classroom.